watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Happening now at 6, covering the entire DMV. New Virginia laws, what Governor Glenn Youngkin just signed and vetoed, plus the chances for a new arena, more than likely dashed. And we have a little thunder and lightning out there here in the district. We'll show you the latest radar, talk about the different alerts that are in, impacting the area over the next 24 hours, and I'll show you the seven day all coming up. To cover suing the city, why some parents say students with disabilities weren't given a reliable transportation. We're hearing from both sides in the district. And finding forever homes, the dog adoption happening now after they were seized following an armed standoff in D.C. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us for D.C. News Now at 6 this Saturday evening. I'm Ben Dennis. Right at the top of the hour, over to Scott Sumner with a live look outside. It's tough to see with that rain coming down, a little bit of fog there, too. Can't even see Roslyn. Yeah, no, and actually we have a live reporter, Dave, out there. Uh, we uh, we got word. I could hear him on my IFB. I saw some lightning, he said, and sure enough, that did come to fruition here. As noticed, this one particular cell, it's the strongest of any cell throughout the entire viewing area because it's tied with the actual center of low pressure as it's moving from southwest to northeast. And as you can see here, I'll stop it right there. This is the latest uh, cities and towns that will be impacted with this particular cell here from McLean at 603 to Bethesda at 607 to uh, Martin's Addition at 608 right down to Chevy Chase also coming in at 608. Notice here it's moving pretty quickly. Uh, I think that 71 miles an hour is a little bit too high there, but it's moving to the east northeast pretty quick. And uh, this is again a little wider perspective. You can see the little trail of lightning associated with just this one storm. Otherwise, it's just a generalized cool soaking rain across the area. You'll notice that that particular cell will continue to move up I-95 and north of Baltimore over the next hour or so. So we'll continue to see some steady or light rain showers across the region, but that lightning should be out of here at that point in time. Uh, past rainfall over the last 24 hours, getting up to about an inch and a quarter here, an inch and a third in places like Winchester up towards the Martinsburg area right along the I-81 corridor. Here in our weather headlines again, Hey, if you haven't already been told, set those clocks forward tonight. Uh, mountain snowstorm on Sunday, otherwise it's dry and windy Sunday and Monday. We'll talk about all of this coming up in just a little bit. All right, Scott, thank you. Nearly a dozen dogs have new homes tonight. They're among the 31 rescued from a Southeast DC home during last month's standoff with the owner. Stephen Radigan is believed to have shot and wounded three DC police officers as they served an animal cruelty warrant. 14 of the 31 dogs seized from the house are able to be adopted starting today. Ten of them are now with what they hope are their forever homes. For adult dogs, they're still waiting to be adopted. They include January, the mother of seven puppies given new homes earlier today. According to the D.C. U.S. Attorney's Office, investigators first learned of the dogs after a security camera allegedly caught Radigan beating one of them last April. They went to his home twice in January to address the number of dogs living there and the conditions, including cages. Well, that led to the February 14th shooting. Three police officers shot in an hour long standoff before Radigan surrendered. The animals are still locked up, but being properly taken care of by Humane Rescue Alliance while they're looking for a new home. These dogs have been through a lot, but at the same time, we've spent a lot of time with them over the past weeks and know that they are 100% ready to be in a new adoptive home. But this is also a big surge of people, and so I think, you know, much like people, anybody might get a little bit nervous, but I think you'll see that they'll just melt into your arms. The 17 other dogs rescued from the house either have new homes or need more training. The Humane Rescue Alliance closes at 7 o'clock, less than an hour now. It's open from noon to 7, seven days a week. Good luck to them. Police in Alexandria say that a man is in custody tonight after a barricade situation this afternoon. Officials responded to North Armistead Street around 1 p.m. North Armistead Street and Quantrill Avenue were closed while police were investigating. The roads have since reopened. In the district, an Ohio man was arrested after he tried to get into the U.S. Capitol with this hammer. According to the U.S. Capitol Police, they say they found it in his backpack during a routine screening. Police say the man grabbed the bag, became combative when they tried to look inside. Officers ended up using a stun gun on him, taking him into custody. Suspect Christopher Snow being charged with assaulting a police officer that's still under investigation. In time, plans to build that monumental sports arena in Virginia are on hold, nearly dead. State lawmakers left the arena 
off their proposed budget released just yesterday. The arena deal, it's part of a plan to move the Washington Wizards and Capitals from D.C. to Potomac Yard in Alexandria. Now, State Senator Louise Lucas chairs the State Senate Finance Committee. She has repeatedly blocked the arena deal earlier this week, stressed even further why. I do not believe we ought to put the full faith and credit of the Commonwealth behind a project that's going to further enrich billionaires. If they want this project, pay for it. Governor Glenn Youngkin now has limited options to keep the arena in the budget. He could call for a special session or offer a budget amendment next month. And Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin, meantime, just signed 64 bills into law yesterday. Youngkin signed those bills with bipartisan support, including legislation to enshrine the legality of same-sex marriage in Virginia if the U.S. Supreme Court ever reversed their decision legalizing same-sex marriage nationwide. Another bill signed into law will prohibit universities in Virginia from giving preferential treatment in the admissions process to students related to donors or alumni. In a statement, Youngkin said the bipartisan bills he signed into law are, quote, a clear demonstration of what can be achieved when we set politics aside and work together for Virginians. Meantime, Youngkin vetoed eight other bills. Those include legislation that would have required the state commissioner of elections to rejoin a data sharing interstate compact that aimed at fighting voter fraud. And with warmer weather inching closer, Fairfax County police are warning about people targeting homeowners to fix their driveways. DC News Now's weekend morning anchor Tosin Fakile reports on what police say to look out for. Fairfax County Police is reminding homeowners to be on the lookout for people or businesses trying to swindle them out of money with claims of paving their driveways. They're reminding people those who try to do the work have to be licensed. Police say the schemes usually begin with solicitation or a knock at the door. They say con artists try to offer homeowners a deal to repave a driveway, seal it, or provide other concrete work while trying to make homeowners think the work is urgent. Investigators say the tricksters typically take a monetary deposit from the homeowner, begin the work, and they never complete it. So here's their advice. When someone knocks at your door, ask for their soliciting license. If they don't have a valid license, ask them to leave. Immediately call Fairfax County Police at the number on your screen to report that violation. Now they say if you plan to hire a contractor, ask to see a copy of the contractor's business license. Contractors, including paving, con paving contractors, must have a valid Virginia contractor's license. You can check that license status and file a complaint at the Department of Professional and Occupational Regulation. They're the ones who issue the licenses. Now consider, they say, also consider getting multiple quotes from different contractors and keep all records, including contracts, text messages, and any communication between you and the contractor. Now, investigators also suggest doing a basic internet search on addresses and phone numbers that the contractor gives you. For more tips and to see a sample of a solicitor license or to get the number to call that department, you can check our website, dcnewsnow.com. In the studio, I'm Tosin Fakile. Back to you. Thanks to Tosin tonight. Authorities say a Hagerstown man was sentenced to 10 years in prison for a series of armed carjackings and attempted carjackings. 22-year-old Carlos Guardado Eagle and other suspects carjacked four victims at gunpoint between May 15th and June 1st of 2022. That's according to his guilty plea. Officials say that he and other suspects also attempted to carjack a fifth person. Guardado Eagle was arrested in June of 2022. And of course, it's almost time to spring forward. Right now, many people across the U.S. are setting their clocks ahead tonight, happening at 2 a.m. tomorrow morning. Have you ever wondered why we do this? Name me in that group. Why you lose an hour of sleep but gain more hours of sunlight in the evening? Experts say pushing our clocks ahead encourages people to spend time after work doing activities on the opposite side. Falling back an hour in the fall allows students to go to school when it's light outside. Earlier today, people in the district celebrated National Women's Month at the Her Story 5K race. That event pays homage to the 350,000 women and girls living in the nation's capital. It included influential women, speak, women speakers, a scenic race route down Pennsylvania Avenue, and pop-up exhibits about women's history. Some good news here, the Fairfax Connector is back in service. A worker strike put that public transit system on pause for nearly two weeks. The union reached an agreement with the company that operates the Fairfax Connector back on Tuesday night. Bus drivers have been working for TransDev without a contract since last year. 
Remember about some metro changes this weekend in addition. Today and tomorrow, Medical Center and Bethesda metro stations will be closed. Shuttle buses will replace trains between Grobner and Friendship Heights. Red line trains will run every 8 to 10 minutes from Shady Grove to Grosvenor. Green line trains will be single tracking between Navy Yard Inn and Acostia. In Western Maryland, several students in Frederick County are being hailed heroes. They helped save a coach's life during a school swim meet. Here's a little of this one. Skylar Salas, who covers that area for us, has their story. Thanks to two Walkersville High School students, a swim coach is alive and back with her family after she suffered from cardiac arrest at a recent swim meet. Senior Walkersville High School student Abigail Roki was switching lifeguard shifts when she noticed Joan Fairbanks stretched out in a chair. When Roki checked on Fairbanks, she was unresponsive and turning blue. I began CPR, did 30 compressions. We, um, my co-guard Natalie she was doing um, rescue breaths and um, at the time we didn't know what was going on like we didn't know if she was choking if she had an allergic reaction if like we, we didn't know any of it. Luke Danny Luck another Walkersville senior stepped in to help. Just trying to uh, go through the steps to get her breathing again it didn't there really was it really wasn't panicky or chaotic at all it was really just really well composed and just you know this is what we need to do and we did it. They were not the only ones to help. Natalie Williams and Christina Huffer watched how quickly their co-guards stepped in. I think they did everything that they could. The way she responded and the way she did everything was like perfect and she was right on it. And for Fairbanks, she says although she doesn't remember much of what happened, she says the actions of those students helped save her life. So I'm just really grateful that um, she was, that she noticed and that the lifeguards were well trained and, and quickly went into action without um, hesitation. Fairbanks says she is now wearing an implantable cardioventor defibrillator. Reporting in Walkersville, Maryland, Skylar Salas for DC News Now. Amazing.